that photo was nothing compared, like, come on, like, compared to the Christian music industry. Take a look at this clip or a portion of Jamal Bryant and Dante Bowe's conversation on Jamal Bryant's podcast, okay? And as usual, you know, he has he has interesting people in there and they have some interesting conversations. But what is the case is that you get to actually see what goes on between the two ears of the guests that he has. Mm -hmm. And sadly, we also get to see the spiritual condition a lot of times just put on display because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Yes. And so people can't help it once they start talking to show you who they really are. Mm. And with that being the case, we have the, this clip from the interview. I ain't never said this either. I used to get him hell. Like as far as like, you know, things that I thought should be better or I'm on my own green room. And I wasn't being arrogant or prideful. I just genuinely felt like, um, I genuinely felt like it was it was it was something that I had worked for. And so I I did that. Our Stella Awards, I can't bring my grandmother. Okay, well I'm not coming. So I didn't go. <laughs> and so I think in general, it was about both. Like I think the 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 photo just made it easy to be like, that photo was nothing compared like, come on, like compared to the Christian music industry. And the we were kids too. Like we weren't even like the adults. They be right. got some other stuff. But like, just like when with you know us in our twenties, early twenties, like that was not that big of a deal. Trust me, that was not the biggest thing we have met about. But right. but it was. Yeah. Yo. It's it's so crazy. Come and on, man. The way he's even explaining is so casual, <laughs> and he says, you know, that was just nothing, and then. Also, like you are in a group, right? You are in a group, a Christian group. You guys, you're you're singing, you're all about glorifying God, right? That's the premise of it. So why are you separating yourself? So already there's some selfishness there because I guess, you know, he could see himself like, okay, you know what? I'm the big dog in this group. I'm the one who is most talented in this group. So for him to say, right, for him to say that... Trust me, that was nothing compared to go to what goes on in like gospel music, right? And he's like, we're just doing what, like, we're just little kids doing whatever it is. There's grown, but he's basically saying there are grown ups in gospel music that are doing far worse than whatever they're doing. Mm. That's what he's saying that there are grown ups in gospel that do far worse than what what we did and what I did to him posting a a nude picture, and so. You're seeing it again. You're seeing it again where it's just like, okay, there's no recognition of sin. And also, I would add that he's, um, you know, comparing himself to people rather than comparing himself to the Word of God, right? Using the Word of God as a standard. Like, okay, what is what is the standard for believers? It is us following God's Word. It is us adhering to the command to be holy. And he's not doing that. Instead, he's what he's comparing himself to is what other folks were doing. And that just that's just so revealing as far as like this guy's level of like spiritual maturity or lack thereof in my eyes. It looks like there's quite a lot that goes on in these quote unquote gospel industries, right? And yeah, man, it's they think that it's okay. So long as they can just go on the stage and perform and sing those Christian songs, but their lifestyle is not matching the things that they're singing, you know, so not good at all. I, I have heard uh, many artists talk about they got gigs, they got dates. At what level, even in sacred art success, does it shift to green rooms? and get platinum records like and when your mom is at home watching you live a certain way a certain lifestyle and not allowed access to 
access to you because of a group. The thing is, like, when, when I became solo, like, my parents and my grandmother and them, it was just very easy for them to kind of, like, be a part of it. And I think when I was in a group, it was very hard for them to, like, comprehend, to understand what was even happening, even though they created this person. You know what I mean? And they, and they I mean, my grandmother, my grandfather, my mom and my dad, they really loved me and they really, like, um, invested in me. First investors in, like, what I do. And um, at some point, you start... I, I hate the word demanding, but you start demanding like respect for what you do solo, what you do with the group. And um, if you don't, unfortunately, in this industry, you get treated very bad. Even though your fans might look at you like a star, even though you might be selling out arenas, you're not getting treated that well unless you deliberately kind of demand it. Yes. So I did, I did that. I did that and I don't regret it. Yeah, but the, I'm, I want to go back too because again... I've, I've interfaced with a lot of people who are in secular music, right? Okay. And even, I think you're missing what I'm asking. Okay, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Okay, because <laughs> even in your intonation on fans, and I need my own green room because I deserve it, is that I should be at this level because of my plaques. I don't know how different that is if I don't make you Quavo and Amigos uh, to say... How, how does industry impact ministry? It is some kind of day. It is some kind of day when <laughs> Jamal Bryant actually sounds I sensible know. I know. and is challenging this guy about what he's talking about. I know. Like that's that when you see that happening, when you see like a a, a, a wolf, basically <laughs> a false so teacher <laughs> speaking sense to somebody. That's when you know that the person that he's talking to got a lot of problems. That is so bad. That is so bad. Where you can have Jamal Bryant, <laughs> speaker Bryant, activist Jamal Bryant is talk, is asking a real question. In fact, he actually told him, no, 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 no. You're missing the point. You're missing the question that I'm asking you. Because Jamal can see, okay, you are doing this as for ministry, right? But the things that you're demanding has got nothing to do with the ministry. So is it about you or is it about ministry? So, uh, you know, I mean, Jamal Bryant is correct, yo. <laughs> Jamal Bryant is speaking sense, and he's actually asking him a really good question here. He's like, so... At what point? At what point is it now that you can demand green rooms? At what point is it like now, okay, all that stuff becomes so important? And notice all the metrics that he's talking about are all these worldly metrics, okay? He's saying like, no, because I sold so many records, because I am selling out arenas, because I'm doing all these things, I should have my own green room, even though I'm part of a larger group when I'm with Maverick City. Like, I deserve to have my own green room. That is absurd. That's ab absolutely absurd. It's like, if you've ever done music or been in a group with people and done stuff with folks, th that's part of the, the joy of it. It's like going, you know, on tours together, going on uh, trips together to do <laughs> events and stuff, and being together, the togetherness matters. But this just comes to, goes to show me that these people had no sense of that, is that this... This music, and he's going to say something in a moment that's actually going to be very eye-opening, but this music that they're doing, man, that this these groups, there's nothing in them like where they have solidarity and love and relationships, real relationships with one another, because you should be, you should want to be around your friends. You know what I'm saying? You should be, you should want to be around your group mates, but he doesn't want that. He's like, no, I sold more than some of these guys, then y'all uh, on your own. I'm doing much more than you guys, and therefore I should have my own green room. Completely absurd. I don't know how different that is if I don't make you Quavo and Amigos. Uh, to say, how, how does industry impact ministry? Mm. That's a good question. I think, I think specifically in this case, Ministry kind of got lost. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, the ministry started on the stage. Yeah. Everything before that, even everything after that, um, it wasn't a part of our daily devotion. It wasn't a part, like, we, ministry, even hearing that word sometimes, like, that's not even, like, what we would, would talk about. 
or anything like that, it would it, it would be the stage would provoke that idea. I, I shared. Uh, I went through a divorce about twelve years ago, and I t- talked at a men's conference and said I knew I lost my placement when people were asking me for pictures and not asking me for prayer. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Nobody would stop me in the airport saying, Rev, will you pray for me? Mm-hmm. I got somebody sick at home. Mm-hmm. They're like, come on, let's, let's take this picture. And music is such a critical gift. That part right there to me is probably the worst part mm-hmm. of the whole thing. And he clearly just doesn't even see how bad that statement is and how crazy that statement is. It's just that the word ministry seemed very foreign to him, right? The word ministry seemed extremely foreign to him, and it didn't fit in his mind when he was trying to picture what they were doing. Ministry and what they were doing, they weren't the same thing. He, He said ministry happened when they got on stage. When they got on stage, it's like they flipped the switch. Yes. <laughs> and then it's like, we're Maverick City. We're yes. a gospel group. We're singing these gospel songs. And we want people to cheer and wave their hands in the air and talk about God. And we're going to say all the right things for the next two hours of this show. And then we're going to go home and get off stage. And we're going to go rock to some Bad Bunny and do whatever else we do mm-hmm. that is our normal lives. Yes. That's literally what this guy just explained to us in not so many words. That they were they 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 live a very duplicitous life, these gospel artists. Yes. Majority of, well, let me not say majority, but some of them clearly. Some of them clearly. Famous and ones. yes, some of the some of the, the more let me say notorious ones. Okay. <laughs> the, not even famous ones, the notorious ones, the they're notorious for a reason. Okay. And the things that we mm-hmm. see them do and say and promote, really show you that these guys are not in it for that. And and the shallowness where he's like, oh, ministry, like he says, we didn't talk about like devotions and things like that. Like to him, that's like what he associates with, like, dude, preaching, preaching the gospel, you have an opportunity. Imagine having an opportunity to stand before 20,000 people and preach the gospel. Yeah. Like how crazy is that? Like the, the the blessedness of that, that opportunity that God has given you that opportunity, and to to lead people in worship of His name, and that to you is just like like no, like you, you can't put it, you can't even process it properly. I mean, it's crazy to me. Yeah, then I don't think they even they never approached it that way. That's why even Dante was just like, wow, ministry. He's not putting. Him being in a uh, gospel uh, group, that's them doing ministry. He cannot um, fathom that. He doesn't even know that's what they were doing. That's why he was able just to do whatever else he's doing, right? And this is also the problem when Christians want to be Christians on Sunday and then they want to be everything else when you're at work, when you're at school, when you're doing these other things. Yeah, you leave the Christian behind. But that's not the life of the Christian. Like if you're a Christian, if you're in Christ, that's it. So whether you're at work, whether you're at school, whatever else you're doing, you need to maintain the same uh, the same lifestyle. You need to maintain the same posture. You need to maintain the same standards because whatever he's doing, like, okay, you, to him, he's just like, oh, oh, these things only happen when we're on stage. These things should have happened before you hop on stage, right? Like, you know, you're praying, you're asking God to, you know, to be with you, the things that you you are, the things that you're doing. These people just went on stage because they're so gifted and so talented, and it was just their talent. It was just their gifts, right? They're just running on these things, like and be announced to them whatever they're doing. It wasn't of the Lord, despite them singing about the Lord, but it wasn't about the Lord. Very, very unfortunate. <laughs>